Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I welcome you to another voice actor spotlight. Today I want to take a look at one of the deepest voice in the business, David Sobolov. When I was preparing for my interview with Richard Newman, I watched TFCon panel clips with him, Gary Chalk, and David. When he spoke, I got curious about him and wanted to find out more about this man who voiced a character I kinda ignored when I was younger, Depth Charge. At the time I just didn't get the idea of a manta ray in a land-based war cartoon. Now, well I still don't get it, but I appreciate the character. As I researched David, I realized how kind, grateful and happy he was. And that's pretty much on par with voice actors. I've never seen a grumpy, bitter or vain one. I guess it's an ideal job, or at least a very healthy one. Born on October 23, 1964 in Windsor, Ontario, I didn't find much info on his childhood, but in an interview with Jantmore on YouTube, he did tell a story where at age 14, he was 30 seconds away from drowning in a lake while at a party on a shore with his marching band. He couldn't get back to shore and luckily, his bandmates were looking for him. They pulled him out and according to him, he became older right there. This experience gave him a profound appreciation for life because since then, if David saw an opportunity, he grabbed it. Because you never know when life could end. And that mentality would later change his life. Before he was a voice actor, he toured with an a cappella singing group and worked in pit orchestras playing the French horn. David studied acting at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theatre and his teacher was Sanford Meisner, a legend in the acting business for both acting and teaching. While performing a new play with the Roundabout Theatre New Play Center in NYC, an agent saw him and invited him to do villains for cartoons. Sue Blue wanted to hire him for a cartoon called Vortex while David was touring with his a cappella group. That's the opportunity that changed his life, because he knew he had to grab it. So he rented a private plane to take him from the middle of the woods to Vancouver, paid his bandmate for the whole weekend's income they were going to miss, just to take the shot. And that shot was worth it. Voice acting was the kind of work in the arts that was the best fit for him and gave him a stable living, so it made sense to pursue it and he has been doing it for over 30 years. At first he worked out of Vancouver during the animation boom while people were encouraging him to go to Los Angeles. At some point a manager friend of his booked four appointments for him in LA without asking him and then told him to book a flight. So David did that and started working for CESD, a talent agency. Now let's take a look at David's iconic roles. He's had a few. First and foremost, he did get the gig Sue Blue wanted him for and played on Vortec Undercover Conversion Squad as the villain Lord Matrix. Then he dubbed the Priest and Ogre Slayer, followed by Sergei in Key the Metal Idol. But his first iconic role has to be Depth Charge, a surviving chief of security from the Omicron colony destroyed by Protoform X. Transforming into a manta ray, he packed a lot of attitude and firepower. Back off, Prima. He blew it. Just like I told the High Council you would. Up to a great start, he then played the titular character in Robocop Alpha Commando. That's a role David said really helped him get recognized and get more jobs. My name is Murphy, and I'm not a robot. He worked on Sabrina the Animated Series as Spooky Jar, and reprised the role for the video game. On the short-lived Marvel Spider-Man Unlimited series, he played Lord Tiger, then went over to DC to voice Kron on Teen Titans. David also worked on a lot of video games, getting his first role in Spawn Armageddon as the Devil Melibolgia and the Kingpin in The Punisher. In 2006, he worked on Marvel Ultimate Alliance as Blackheart and Titanus. To switch back to DC and work on Justice League Heroes as Darkseid, came back to the Transformers franchise in 2007 for Transformers The Game as Brawl. The old spark is mine, Ironhide. And voiced Vasquez in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Then he worked on a movie that could have been the first in a trilogy, Dragonlance Dragons of Autumn Twilight as Verminard, the main antagonist. On Halo Wars, you heard him as Arbiter Ripa Murami, but he's renowned for his role in the worldly popular League of Legends as Volibear. My sister, together we would harness a storm to consume the Freljord. Once again, he got to be part of the Transformers brand when offered a role on Transformers Prime as Shockwave. Reports of my demise were greatly premature. Which he played again for Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Predacons Rising. David played Lobo in Young Justice, a role he would reprise two more times in the video game's LEGO DC Supervillain and in Justice Gods Among Us. 
On Ultimate Spider-Man, he portrayed Drax the Destroyer, which he reprised 12 more times on Marvel's Super Hero Squad Online, Marvel Heroes, Avengers Assemble, Hulk and the Agents of Smash, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, Disney Infinity 2.0, Guardians of the Galaxy, Marvel Avengers Academy, and LEGO Marvel Super Heroes The Thanos Threat. Now that's job security. Very well. I will follow the sound of the bell as you instruct. He was Asmodan in Diablo 3 and the DLC Reaper of Souls. Nine characters on Kaijudo Rise of the Duel Masters, including Tatsuri on The Unchained. In 2014, he voiced Gorilla Grodd in The Flash, which he reprised on Legends of Tomorrow, Justice League Action, and LEGO DC Supervillain. He was part of the Ben 10 2016 reboot as Upgrade, Vin Ethanol, 11 more characters, and reprised Upgrade for the video game. In Injustice 2, he voiced Dr. Fate, went to work for the popular Fortnite as Black Knight Garrigan, and in a game I recently played, Conan Exiles, he was Arcos the Wanderer and Warmaker Clayel. Then it's back to the Transformers, this time for the live-action Bumblebee movie as Blitzwing. Tell me where your friends are hiding. In the blockbuster hit Alita Battle Angel, he was Centurion, and in Vader Immortal, a Star Wars VR series, he was the Black Bishop, following with the voice of Nicholas Lobov in Attack on Titans, No Regrets. Then guess what? That's right! Back to Transformers for Rise of the Beast, where he played Battle Trap. Scourge, I have eyes on the key! Hey, Plank. You must take it, keep it hidden, so that it never falls into the hands of Unicron. And Rhinox, whose lines were cut from the movie, making him just a brute. Too bad, I like my Rhinoxes smart. David has a great career so far, and I think he'll definitely go on to do more. Voice actors seldom retire. David recognized the importance of doing a great job when creating and voicing a character. While recording Robocop during an important scene, David was up to 10 takes and someone told him it's just an effing cartoon. But David told him, Jim, it's got my name on it. And I think that is key in anything you do. If your name is going to be on something, make it something you can be proud of. The impact of a show can be life-changing. David met a soldier who has had a friend die before his eyes during a tour. And he told David he had nightmares every night. But one day he realized that after watching Transformers Prime, he didn't have nightmares. That was mind-blowing to David, but also extremely gratifying to know that a show he worked on helped someone in such a capacity. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of David Sobolov's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I love reading those. Keep coming back, I have more on the way, and remember, nothing in life gives you a right to be an asshole. Take care!